Good morning everyone, it's time for another video about our home energy and solar production. This time I'm going to cover the year-end results for 2021. And the reason why I want to do it, an annual review for this is because there's a huge contrast between what happened in December, which was an abysmal month and hardly any solar generation, but then when looking at the total year, it really comes home as to why it's good to go electric, why it's good to have an electric car, why it's good to have solar panels, and why a home storage battery. All of those things together have given these results, and it's this result that I really want to get across, because instead of spending thousands of pounds on energy, I am spending hundreds of pounds. Hundreds instead of thousands. It's just that easy to understand by going electric, by having a strategy to go electric. I am saving thousands of pounds on my energy bills. So let's go right back to the beginning and talk about why my strategy is to convert all of my fuels away from fossil fuels, not just for environmental purposes, to electric. And it's quite simple. I wanted to add solar panels to produce my own energy, to run my home, using my own energy and reduce my costs. But the moment you do that, you realize that to maximize the benefit of your solar panels, you need to use more energy. So the more you use, the more you save. The more you save, the more you can add more solar, and it goes round and round until you're using all of your energy that you're producing yourself. And also, it's a compound impact, isn't it? The sooner you do it, the sooner you convert to an electric car, the sooner you convert to having solar panels on your roof using your own electricity, the sooner you start, the sooner you start saving. Now, for me, it is a strategy. It's a strategy that I want to reduce my monthly outgoings and I want to spend capital instead. So I'm retiring, I'm retiring this year, and I want to keep my pension income low so that I'm taxed less on it. The, re the way to do that is to have low bills. By investing in solar panels, having an electric car, my fuel bills are being reduced from something like three to four thousand pounds. Instead, I'm gonna be having bills of three to four hundred pounds. So that makes a huge difference because that three to four thousand pounds, I no longer need as an income. So if I no longer need it as an income, I'm not being taxed on it. So I'm saving a tax burden as well. Plus, I'm saving by my pension staying in the pension, earning more money for the future. My pension will last longer. And hence, I viewed that I wanted to produce my own energy so I didn't feel restricted. I didn't feel restricted in my use of a car. I wanted freedom to travel where I wanted, when I wanted, without worrying how many hundreds of pounds would it cost in fuel to do that journey. Having an electric car, the costs are so cheap you feel free, you feel able to do those journeys and you don't feel restricted at all. And I'm experiencing exactly the same with heating the home with electricity. The more you do it from cheap energy, the more you do it from your own energy, the more free you feel to turn devices on. And as you get older, that's what you want, isn't it? You don't want to be restricted with limited incomes. What you want is to be free with money to spare. So my strategy just seems to make sense. It's convert petrol and diesel, go electric. Stop using gas or oil, in my case, for my heating and home hot water production, and use electric instead. And because it's electric, I can produce my own electricity at home using solar panels. Yes, you could use a wind turbine too. It does seem a little more complicated and a bit more unique to be able to get one. And I'm not quite there yet, but uh, solar panels are doing the job. So bear with me. Listen to these stats and they really will make sense because this is a real world example. Uh, we're living in a 12 year old home here. It's quite modern, reasonably well insulated. Uh, we're an adult couple with a teenage daughter. It's a four bedroom house and our solar panels are pointing south at the moment. So there's the detail. Um, I, am, I am an efficient, I wouldn't say frugal, I'm an efficient person. I believe in efficiency. So by not doing something like turning a light off, you become more efficient. And the more you do it, the more compound impact you have. So turning a small wattage device off doesn't seem like a big change, but multiply it by 24 hours and then by uh, the 365 days, it becomes a significant number. So efficiency and savings are something that I do as well. So my thought about my efficiency is I'm not skimping, I'm not saving pennies. I'm just having a mentality that I want to reduce my usage and be efficient and also use my own energy, which gives me the freedom then to use more. So I'm going in cycles, aren't I? I'm reducing, but then I'm increasing. And you don't mind when it's cheap energy and it's your own. Anyway, 
The numbers. What has happened? This year I spent £177 on electricity. £177. That's an average of, what was it? Uh, let's have a look. £15 a month. So that was my electricity bill. But what did that include? That included running my electric mini from January through to about October. And I did about 4,500 miles, I think. So not a huge mileage, but it was all for free. I didn't really spend any money from the grid on charging the car, so no fuel bills whatsoever. When I had my Kona Electric, I did 11,000 miles one year and it cost me 17 pounds. So you really can, in my circumstances, discount petrol and diesel completely. So spending 1,500, 2,000 pounds a year on fuel, that's gone, that bill has gone and I don't have it anymore. Some years, no doubt, I'll be doing more charging on the road and uh, it'll be more expensive, but it's gonna be a couple of hundred pounds, maximum. So if that's the cost of energy and I haven't had any other energy, well, apart from January and February in the year where we did use the oil boiler. So if we add in some cost that I had in November and December and put that across into the January and February column, so let's add another 70 pounds to that bill, maximum, including heating the house in January and February this year, it would have been about 250 pounds. As you know, if you've followed my videos, I'm doing a test this year, not using the boiler and uh, using electricity instead. But that didn't start until about March, April, May time this year. So in those early months, yes, I was still using oil. The cost of that, uh, probably somewhere between 70 and 100 pounds on today's values, I'm, I'm not quite sure. So the numbers, let's make sense of the numbers so you can understand what we're doing here. Um, I've got 6.3 kilowatts of solar panels on the roof and we generated 6.3 megawatt hours for the entire year. So that's a nice easy number, one megawatt hour per kilowatt of solar panels on the roof, probably because they're south facing, so that's quite a good result. That 6.3 megawatt hours is uh, made up of 2.22 megawatt hours. That was up to June, I think, including our Solace inverter. Then I swapped the Solace inverter out for a Huawei one, or Huawei one, and that was to test the inverter. And we've generated 1.73 megawatt hours using that inverter. Add in 2.34 megawatt hours from the Solar Edge inverter. Yeah, there's lots of bits and pieces here. And the total comes to 6.3. So that's quite a lot of solar energy, considering our house consumed 3.7 megawatt hours for the year. So the house on its own, 3.7. So that includes some battery charging, and that includes you know, the oven, the cooking, the lights, and the electric heating in the uh, last few months as well, in uh, November and December. But on top of that, we've had 1,550 kilowatt hours used for heating our hot water through the MyEnergy Eddy device. So 1,550 kilowatt hours, of which 1,176 were from solar energy. Only 374 came from the grid, and most of those were in the winter period of uh, November and December. Then on top of that, car charging, as you'll see, it's quite low because we didn't go that far, only those four and a half thousand miles. We charged on the Zappi uh, 930 kilowatt hours, 774 of which were from solar energy. Only 155 came from the grid. That grid energy isn't expensive because we're using overnight cheap energy. In the early part of the year, I was using the Octopus Agile tariff, and I think we're averaging around 10 or 11 pence per kilowatt hour. Now in the winter time, I have swapped across to the Go tariff and I was very fortunate to swap just before they changed the prices. And uh, <clears throat> my average is now under seven pence per kilowatt hour for our grid usage. So we're doing very, very well. Uh, even though many people are now having electric bills that are doubling, it's based on the timing of when you have to change and how expensive those tariffs are. My change will come September this year, and no doubt that will be a big change because energy prices have gone up massively. So I'll probably at least double my bill, if not treble. So it is gonna be expensive, but doubling or trebling hundreds of pounds is so much better than doubling uh, or trebling thousands of pounds. And then think of the impact on your income because of that. What else, what else have we got to talk about? Uh, battery, I've got a home storage battery here. It's a five kilowatt hour battery of which four kilowatt hours is usable. But on some days in the winter, that four kilowatt hours of energy, I can turn into eight because I can charge it up 
in the evening, in the early hours of the morning, use that energy and then the sun can come out sometimes in the winter and recharge the battery again. And I get two uses of it in a day. So even though it's only four kilowatt hours usable, sometimes you get quite a bit more energy out of it. But some of the important numbers is, isn't just um, how much we're using and how much we're generating, it's how much we're exporting and how much we're importing. So we imported 1.37 megawatt hours from the grid for the entire year, and we only paid 177 pounds. So you do the maths and it works out to be this much per kilowatt hour. Now, hopefully that works out to be just under seven pence, as I said, but we will see. <laughs> hopefully I'm accurate, but that's what it actually works out to be. But that's not bad, is it? You know, 1.37 megawatt hours sounds like a lot, but it's not, it's a tiny amount. So we exported 1.56 megawatt hours to the grid. Now that seems bad. We actually exported more than we imported, but export isn't bad. On the fit tariff that we have on the first array of solar panels, we got one of the last fit tariffs, which pays us the least amount of money of any fit tariffs, but it still pays five pence per kilowatt hour of what we generate. And also it pays us a deemed export of half of that energy, again, uh, for deemed export. So I'm being paid to export 1.9 megawatt hours of energy. And yet I only exported 1.5, so I'm doing quite well. I'm using more of the energy and being paid an export for it. Now, it's not a huge amount of money, it's just a few pence, but it does add up. Now this is how good it is as well, how much it does add up. I've been paid in fit payments so far, 277 pounds for the year. That's an average of 23 pounds a month. And yet the 177 pounds that I'm paying is only an average of 15 pounds per month. So I'm definitely being paid by the fit tariff more than I'm paying for the import of energy. So that is working out really, really well for me. For those people that are considering buying solar panels now, fit tariffs aren't available in the UK, but smart export guarantees are, and you can be paid more money than I am for export by choosing an export tariff that pays you a decent value. If you went on the Octopus Agile outgoing tariff, sometimes you can be paid up to 30 pence a kilowatt hour, and I have seen it over a pound per kilowatt hour in these crazy energy times. So there are ways to make money to offset the cost of your electricity using smart export guarantees. And for me, it's on a fit tariff. So we've done really, really well, haven't we? And I think you could say that this is a real world case example. I'm not doing anything here that you can't do. Installing solar panels, going electric with an electric car, and having an efficient mind about how to run our life more efficiently. And in doing so, by generating our own electricity and using electricity more, we are saving thousands of pounds. Mostly the reason why we are paying so little for our electricity is because we're not using any during most of the months. So if you look at that percentage on the pie chart of how much electricity is being used in each month, it's 41% in December, 26% in November, 7% in January, 6% in February, and then the months in between are negligible. We're talking one, two, three percent. So there's so little electricity used in the summer months, in the spring months, in the autumn months, that they're almost zero, they almost don't count. It's just the standing charge, really, that you're paying. The other electricity in those uh, winter months, that's what you're paying for, but you can offset that by what you are exporting in excess during the summer. So I definitely would want this video to be an encouragement to say, you too, can change. You too can look at all of your energy costs, add up your petrol and diesel costs, look at your house energy, look at your bills for the entire year and work it out. How many thousands are you paying? And do you want to keep paying thousands of pounds? Especially if you're in my situation. I know a lot of the viewers of this channel are in a similar situation to myself, either retired or coming up for retirement. Well, do you want to spend your income and have it taxed to pay energy bills? Or do you want to have that money available to go on holiday and to need less income? Less income, the sooner you can retire. So there's the stats for the year, and I wanted to make a big deal about it because 177 pounds. I feel like there should be fireworks and explosions going off. Um, where some people are spending thousands of pounds, please leave me some comments below about how much your energy bills are, including petrol, diesel, house, oil, gas, the whole lot. How much are you spending on energy? And then think about it, think about what you could do. Could you too convert to using electricity and have a strategy of generating your own electricity so that you are saving 
and protecting yourself from energy cost rises in the future. Now that energy costs have gone up, it really, really makes sense to do this. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you're as enthused as I am about solar panels, electric cars, and uh, changing your life, having a strategy about saving money as well so that you can enjoy life more. I hope this makes sense. Uh, I really wanted to share this one with you because the contrast between a gloomy December where we didn't generate anything was contrasted by the annual results, which showed, yeah, we made good decisions, didn't we? Buying solar panels, home storage batteries, and going electric with an electric car. Uh, I'm not being smug about it. I'm just trying to present a real world case so that you can think too, can I do this? Can I save those thousands of pounds? And you can. Just keep investigating it. Keep going forward one step at a time. It is a strategy. You don't have to do it all in one go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please don't forget to like the video and click subscribe as well if you haven't already subscribed. More videos on electric cars. I will be test driving some more electric cars this year, and my new electric car should be arriving in about seven to eight weeks, hopefully. And uh, more updates on solar panels and home storage batteries. I have now had the quote for the uh, additional solar panels and home storage battery that I am buying. So there's a new ultimate configuration that I would like to share with you. That's coming soon on the channel. So um, yeah, definitely subscribe. More great videos to come. Hopefully you think they're great anyway. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.